Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're going to be looking at a technique I think you'll find quite useful in your more complex projects. So here, let's just start off with an example. It's a very easy technique. When you see it, you're going to be like, oh, but I think uh, pointing it out is something that if you've not done this before, it's something you definitely want to try out. So here I've got this wobble sound, already got a whole bunch of automation clips, you know, doing crazy stuff. This is what it sounds like. You know, cool sound. And what we're going to do is I'm going to remove this filter. So I've got a filter here that's doing what you would expect. It is raining in the sound. This filter here isn't specifically responsible for the main shape of the sound. I've got other things doing that for me. So uh, here's what it sounds like. So as you can hear, there is a lot more low end now. And this is just going to be a problem later on down the mix when I've got drums, additional layers, and all these other things going on. I just don't need that constant low end just booming out the bottom part. But I also just don't want to remove it. So this is where the technique comes in. And the distinction is, I could just put an EQ on here and put a cut. And that would be kind of like me moving an instrumentalist. Like say I've got a saxophone player in a room and I just move them to a different room. Now, now they sound different in that room. And you know, that's kind of what just a static cut does. Now I could move that cut around, but the thing is now I'd have to automate that cut to fit just right. Uh, but you get to keep the low end at spots where it musically makes sense. Now, if you've got a sound like this that already has a lot going on, then you've probably already got automation clips that are very specific to this sound. You know, I spent a lot of time creating these shapes and, and fine tuning them just right so that the groove hits, the, the filters move at just the right moments. Kind of like how if I was a saxophone player and I'd be playing the saxophone, you know, I, I blow differently at just the right moment to give that note just the right enunciation. So here I'm doing a similar thing with these clips. So I, what I'm going to do to fix this low end is I'm going to add a filter and move it around, but I'm going to use an existing clip to do it. And this is kind of like handing a saxophone player a better horn. So, you know, let's say they're playing on a not so good horn that has some issues. They're, they're going to play. They'll probably still be able to make it sound good if they're a good saxophone player because that's just how players be. Uh, they're going to adjust what they're doing to, to fix it. But, you know, they're going to play. And now let's say that you give them a better horn. Well, that same musical instinct, the same musical input will produce a better result just because the horn is improved. Now, of course, in real life, people will adjust to it. So my analogy isn't perfect, but you get the idea. So this is kind of like we're going to have the low end move, but we're going to use the same musical input to drive it. And this is going to simplify my workflow. It's going to take advantage of the time I spent being really musical and just clean up the instrument. Let me really quick show you what's going on inside of M filter. So we've got control over the low end and the high end. And don't be confused. This says high pass, low pass, but this is not a low pass. This is a, a low cut to be sure. So if we come into the edit tab up here, we can actually visually see what's happening. So this number four will move. And we're picking to control the low end, which is why I believe it's, it's labeled low end. But anyways, you can control the settings down here. If this isn't here, you can you can open it up. So the Melda plugins are great because they have their controls hidden. But if it, if it can be controlled, there's probably a menu somewhere to get your hands on it. So you can alter the filter, get the cue just right, settle for what you want. But this is just going to come up and down so that the low end appears uh, in a musical way that matches our other filter movements, which again, to me, is kind of like handing our instrument a new horn and handing the instrumentalist the notes are now going to be played just on a on a little bit better of a horn and what we're going to do is we're going to i want this to move according to a control that already exists so in other DAWs, you would use cc controls and stuff just depends on the DAW. in fo studio what we're going to do is we're going to click on this drop down and we're going to go to browse parameters and i'm going to wiggle the control it'll actually highlight it for me and then I'm going to go to link to controller. So you right click on it and you can move it just to verify. So we see that it matches. So I'm going to go to link to controller and you can select an internal controller, which is just all the automation clips. When you do this, make sure that remove conflicts is off because if you have this on and you click accept, it'll remove all the other things that that thing is controlling. So now you've turned off some other part of your sounds. So you don't want that. So I have this off. I believe it's off by default now. 
and you, you go ahead, you, you pick the automation clip you want to control. Now, if you've split your automation clips up later, like here, what you could do is you can actually merge the clips together and then link it. And so there's a solution there. Or if you haven't uh, broken them up yet, just link it to the controller like so. And then as you break up the clips and make them unique, it'll actually follow that for you. So you won't have to like link to a bunch of new new clips. It'll just, it'll automatically know to go to those new ones. So it's been linked to this and that is why this moves. So the notion, what we're doing here is really simple, but if you've never done it before, then it's like something that you should definitely try out if you have a more advanced sound going. It'll simplify your experience. You can spend more time refining controls that really matter. And then when you come in to do these cleanup moves, you have much better ways of dealing with it than re-automating an EQ or than by uh, just doing a static cut. This is just a lot more dynamic, a lot more musical. And if you ever don't like what's going on here, you could always clone the clip, make it unique, link it, and then make those small adjustments that you want which would be another solution to just starting over from scratch. So a great workflow thing, a great musical thing. This is something I love to do. And whenever I'm working with students that have, you know, more advanced sound design in their projects where they have stuff like this, uh, every now and then we'll come across this topic just as a workflow thing. Cause I'll usually see in the chain somewhere, just a static cut. And I go, well, there's probably a better way to get a little bit more out of that sound than just by leaving an EQ there. Anyways, hope this was helpful to you. Subscribe and let me know down in the comments what you think and have a blessed day.